So anyway, uh, just want to tell you that I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I wanted to share with you that um, John Greenwald was up here talking about you know the FOIA requests. Just want to point out that I work in the government and I I make those big long documents with all those acronyms. Uh, Generally, uh, what we do is we also have the fun of being able to figure out ways to avoid FOIA. I thought I'd let him know that. Um, and then in addition to that, then it's further complicated by the fact that the information loss is tremendous. We have, uh, I work in the IT world uh, in the Army, and if you can't imagine, we've gotten away from paper and moved over to digital, so it's a, the, the problem is that when we have somebody that sits there with a computer and they've spit out their brain matter on this computer for 40 years, and then suddenly what happens is that they leave and they retire. We take the computer over to somebody who then just wipes out everything on the disk and then, and, and then sets it up for the next person to sit there. Uh, there's, after being a ufologist who've had the opportunity to be in Dayton, Ohio, and getting connected into Project Blue Book like I did in Dayton, Ohio, I actually would be on cases where I would have a Blue Book officer sitting next to me. Uh, I also had a situation where I, I got to know the base personnel and so well that they actually invited me to come and do a presentation on UFOs. It was a situation where this person happened to be an individual and his job was to actually fly an aircraft, have a camera mounted on the front of it, and to photograph and film UFOs. When he got back to the base, they took away all of that camera and the film, the film canister, and then he was escorted over a room to sign a non-disclosure act, kind of like statement, saying that he wouldn't talk about it. And here he was talking about it. Okay, the interesting thing about working in the military is you have a lot of people that are concerned about their security clearances, and rightfully so. They've, they've got these long-term jobs that they want to be able to make money, feed their family, and everything else. And, you know, I'll tell you this much. Every day, the DOD is getting hit by over 200 or more attempts at hacking on all of our data. I mean, it's just pathetic. So when you sit back and you say, well, why is the government and the military becoming more closed about things? It's because, guess what? We now see that China is over there developing the same UAVs that we are. They stole all of our information, so they don't have to spend any money on R&D. Okay? So just to give you a different awareness, because I gained that awareness after my 22 plus years in the DOD, and having the opportunity of taking and experiencing. The, uh, the gist here is that, you know, and then there, the one point was Captain Edward Ruppelt, who we've talked many times during the course of the day uh, about, says, why don't the damn thing swim so we can turn them over to the Navy? You know, well, guess what? The Navy re never reported to Project Blue Book their sightings, right? So anyway, this is a case about a, an object that you're going to see that's in the air one minute, and then at the same time, you're going to see it go into the water. So that's a little basic primer that you run into about, the, uh, uh, about infrared. Without boring you on more details, which I could probably do for another two hours, I'm not going to do that. So let's talk about the geographical location of where this took place. Again, it's in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is on the, on the left side of it is the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And then it's a small little island that's set out there uh, in, in the middle of the Atlantic. And just above it is the Atlantic Ocean. Down below it here is the Caribbean. Up above it is an actual trench that, that is down to about 5.2 miles. Uh, and we over here on this side, by the way, are the Virgin Islands. Uh, so here is where it is, and you can see that little red dot that's kind of like showing basically where the position of Aguadilla is located. I'll point out to you that even NOAA points out that there's like an anomaly, a gravity anomaly down in this area uh, that is associated with the fact that you have those two plates coming together which actually form the island. And what do we know from our history of ufology? It's the Bermuda Triangle, right? Uh, at least that's what people claim that it's the Bermuda Triangle. And there happens to be a lot of observations of UFOs that have been seen in Puerto Rico. We have a tremendous 
big history uh, of sightings in this area. A lot of good information here uh, in terms of data that we can use to analyze this video. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, if you can, Carlo, can you go ahead and play that UAV, uh, uh, the, the number one? It's called Unknown. Okay, I'm going to show you the clip. Okay, I'm not going to say anything about it. You just watch it. Let's go have it go through once. Camera operator is swinging it back and forth, trying to find it, zooming in, and it's gone, right? Now imagine yourself on the aircraft watching what just happened. And I'll leave you with this. We figured out what it is. And my friend Dennis Reno came up with what it is. <laughs> Hello. Oh well. You can see it's a little guy there that's doing his shtick and he's waving in his flying saucer. And um, anyway, thank you. <laughs>